What's up guys, Bajiri here. I wanted to make a video for you guys going over the 8.1 Azerite traits for Arms and Fury Warrior, because this is a question that I'm getting a lot on stream, and with some new traits added, and I feel like a few things kind of balanced out differently, especially with just the way these classes are playing right now, the way they're behaving in the meta. I want to let you guys know what I'm thinking in terms of what's helpful, and maybe you guys can incorporate this in your gameplay, and, uh, you know, have some fun as well. So. Uh, we're going to start off as Fury, just because Fury is what I've been playing a ton of already. And I feel like the traits... You have some kind of cool options here. But the basics behind what you're looking for for Fury is your main damage is Rampage, basically. And I feel like the traits that have been the most effective for me are the ones that buff Rampage. So I can show you guys like some of the setups that I like. But basically what you're looking for is one Unbridled Ferocity, at least one Simmering Rage... And I think a Pulverizing Blows is really fun, too. Um, you don't necessarily need more than one Unbridled Ferocity. Um, more than one Simmering Rage only buffs the damage. So these two kind of work the same way. Uh, additive damage on these, for sure, but it's only going to generate one Rage per Strike. Having two Simmering Rage is not going to generate two Rage per Strike. And having two Unbridled Ferocity is not going to give you a 16% chance to grant rec. It's just only going to be 8% chance no matter what but it'll add damage. Uh, this will, once again, be one rage per swing or one rage per strike, no matter what. Uh, but Pulverizing Blows does stack. So if you're wanting to stack traits, I think one of each of these is really good. That might be the best setup. Um, the thing about Pulverizing Blows is that I, I haven't really found an Azerite piece as like a really good secondary. Like, it has Gut Ripper, and I really don't like Gut Ripper. I think maybe it has, like... Um, like Earthlink instead, but I don't know if I like Earthlink either for Fury. Um, but anyway, you do have Intimidating Presence as your third trait, which is really nice. It makes Fear slow and put like a damage absorb effect on people, so that's a reason to use this one. But that's the basics behind Fury. Is I think one of one of Unbridled Ferocity, one of Simmering Rage, and one of Pulverizing Blows is really good. If you wanted to stack two, it would probably look something more like. Uh, two Pulverizing Blows, you're going to get the most out of that. You can stack two Simmering Rage, and sometimes I still do, but mostly because it gives me a triple Elemental Whirl. Uh, elemental Whirl is like a pretty strong secondary one, because it does stack up. So, if I got a, if I got an Elemental Whirl proc of uh, Mastery, it would be giving me like 700 Mastery, which is a lot. Almost 800 Mastery because of how high item level it is. So, that's a lot of Mastery, and then it can also proc Haste, or Versatility, all those stats are really good for Fury. So I think Elemental Whirl is definitely a good secondary stat to look out for. So if you see me using something other than Polarizing Blows, it would probably be this setup right here, where I have an Unbridled Ferocity and two Simmering. Um, but you do have some options on that. And once again, you're going to have to, like, for example, on my Horde Warrior, you know, I've had to kind of just make do with whatever traits I've gotten for a while. But now my Horde Warrior has a setup very much like this. Just not the same item level, although my Horde Warrior does have a 385 helm before my ally does, which is pretty funny, because he's been, you know, 120 for a week. But, anyway, that's the setup for Fury that I'd recommend, is try to find a way to get yourself w one of each of the uh, Rampage buffing traits. Um, and then, if you don't want to use Polarizing Blows, then find yourself a nice Simmering Rage, because that gives you the most damage. Um, and also has a lot of nice secondary traits, but those, so does this one, though, so keep that in mind. Um... We can swap over to arms too. Now arms, I would say, is uh, not as exciting um, because for me arms is a lot slower paced. It's uh, it's kind of like a very very bleed focused in terms of the way it deals damage. But what you have for arms are basically two options here. Um, you really ought to get a strike in the anvil trait somewhere. Uh, it drops off, or it not drops off, but it does have. Um, you can get that off of like one of the. PvP Helms here, the Dread Gladiator's Plate Helm. I got this basically just from doing my Conquest cap, and then I used um, the little thingy that lets you upgrade the item level, whatever it's called, to make it a 370, to then 375 because of my necklace. 
but that has strike into anvil on it. It makes your rotation as arms a lot smoother uh, because it does reduce the remaining cooldown of mortal strike by 1.5 seconds whenever you use an overpower after tactician procs. Uh, once again, if you stack these, it'll make the overpower deal more damage, but it won't further reduce the cooldown of mortal strike. That's how a lot of these trades work. They have like two effects, like adds damage and does this other thing. Usually the and this other thing is not additive, where the damage is. So having one strike in the anvil is really good as arms. Um, and then keep in mind, they also nerfed Crushing Assault. So stacking Triple Crushing Assault was good. And it's still maybe okay. But you may be better off just with the way arms does damage. Is to go a strike in the anvil. And then take two Battlefield Focus or Battlefield Precision. Because as arms right now, a lot of times you're going to be playing Rend, you have deep wounds, and you're going to be playing with another character. You know, obviously, if you're playing with like, you know, somebody in a threes team or you're in a battleground or whatever, this is going to be proccing a lot. It's going to deal a lot of damage for you. So striking the anvil for rotational smoothness and then two battlefield precision to get those those big stacks and deal a lot of damage um, with your bleeds and other, and other, you know, players' damage too. Um, in terms of secondary traits... I love, once again, the Intimidating Presence is really fun, and as I, as you saw in my Fury one, I have one piece of gear that does give me an extra Rallying Cry bonus. I feel like Arms is... One of the reasons I don't love it right now is because it is so utility-focused, and I'm, you know, I like to deal big damage. <laughs> and Arms is all about this. We have the Striking the Anvil is an option. We have over, we have Battlefield Precision, which is an option, which are, which are two of these, right? But then Arms, once again, I feel like it's kind of, like, all bleed-focused, you're just kind of sitting in D stance, mortal striking, and bleeding stuff. So it's definitely not like a super high like burst damage setup right here. You're mostly just trying to like, you know, be an addition to your team that helps peel. Because arms did get, you know, disarms buffed, duel got buffed, and sharpened blade got buffed. So a lot of the utility that arms brings to the table did get buffed. But if you're in, if you're in BGs and you just want to smash people, you still can go slam. And the way that would look right here is obviously just three crushing assaults, right? This is another way to do it. Um, once again, ideally, you're gonna have the traits that I mentioned for the first things, the battlefield focus arms. Uh, but if not, just make a do with what you got. Arms still does well. If, if you have one battlefield focus or battlefield precision, that's great. Um, and then you can put whatever third trait you want. If you want Lord of War for a little bit extra rage on your Colossus Smash, go for it. If you want one slam trait, to make your slam free just rotationally, that's fine too. But I think you definitely want one strike in the anvil, and you definitely want one battlefield precision. Two of them, that's fine too. I, I don't even know if I even have any other good stuff for arms. Once again, I have Lord of War, I have Crushing Assault. We can do other stuff, but I still think that the best bet is for you gonna to try to just get two battlefield precision or battlefield focus, just to really make that that bleed style arms shine and that support style arms shine by debuffing opponents by you know, peeling for your your teammates and putting dots up and letting those dots really sting with Battlefield and making your rotation a little bit more smooth with striking the anvil. So that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Just a review. Fury would be the ones that buff Rampage, like Unbridled Ferocity, Simmering Rage, Pulverizing Blows. For arms, uh, you want one strike in the anvil, Battlefield Precision, and then maybe a third one of your choice. Hopefully another Battlefield, maybe a Crushing, for rage management or a lord of war for rage generation those are probably be your best bet now i will say one thing is that this is my first impression there may be some weird talents that are good like triple gathering storm the blade storm talent could be good obviously that's only going to help you with blade storm but hey if that's a huge burst damage cooldown and you're chopping people up with uh with gathering storm like you like we did on beta go for it um for fury if you want to stack crit and go cold steel hot blood and you can triple stack that trait to get a big dot with a big heal on it. Maybe you can do that too. There are other options. And I definitely encourage you guys to go out and test things out. Let me know what you find. Let me know what you enjoy with your play style. The second thing is these are definitely mostly geared towards PvP. Um, I feel like these things will work in PvE. But there may be things that are especially useful in PvE that are not useful in PvP. Like the Cold Steel Hot Blood. You don't want to really stack crit in PvP. That stat is already nerfed in terms of the damage it deals, and you're going to be less effective doing everything else that you got to do in PvP as well. So just keep that in mind. These are PvP things. These are initial impressions. However, I will tell you that these are definitely good, uh, but maybe there's some busted stuff that will come out in the next couple weeks 
as we continue to test. But I didn't want to wait too long because I know that you guys have been asking me a lot about what traits I use for Arms and Fury. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Thanks for watching. Keep the questions coming. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace!